Hey Simmers, welcome to my channel Sensational Builds. My name is Deb and today we're doing something a little bit different from our usual build videos. I'm going to be talking through some of the pros and cons and my thoughts on the new Star Wars Journey to Batu game pack. So as you can see here, I have my Sim. She is red, it's not just your screen. And uh, some of the cool features that are within the pack. So I know a lot of people are on the fence about this pack Are they unsure of whether or not the pack is for them if they'll even like it or you know Whether or not they should spend their money on it So hopefully this will help you out a little bit in terms of whether or not the pack is for you So just to give you a few of my thoughts on the pack itself So first up this is a vacation world as you would have seen now I'm not going to be doing any, going through any of the build buy objects or the cast items and I'm not going to be doing a let's play either. This is more of just an overall short overview just to give some thoughts on it and another person's perspective to see if the pack is for you. So first up this is a vacation world much like Granite Falls or Selva Dorada. In saying that though this does run a little bit differently and the way that it runs differently is that with the other two vacation worlds you need to uh, oh, use the phone, book your vacation, you choose a place to stay and you choose how long you're going to stay for whether it's you know one, three, five days, whatever the options are. This one's a little bit different. You still have to use your phone to travel here, but you are not selecting where you're staying and there is no set time frame. Now, I've been playing this game for a number of hours now. I've gone through quite a bit of the gameplay and they haven't called me to come back. I haven't had to extend my time here and I haven't had to pay anything for being here either. And I haven't had to go home at any time. Now, there are some lots within the world that actually allow you to sleep and bathe and things like that give you basic amenities there isn't anywhere to stay per se um any lots with any beds or anything like that but i mean i've i've actually been playing this one with cheats just because i wanted to get the actual gameplay and i didn't want to have to worry about you know sleeping and things like that but this building right here in the black spy outpost will give you all your options of you know sleeping freshening up and things like that now in saying that don't do what i did when i first started up my game i made my sim you know gave her her new batu outfit and in fact i made her a that red alien i wanted to make her look like a darth maul darth maul sorry if you know anything about the star wars that was one of the bad guys from the first movie that had the black and red face with the horns now i went into my normal cast when i was in creator sim and managed to give her the horns and then when i came here the first step that you have to do is go to this building and create your battery outfit so i had to do it all over again and for some reason and this is probably one of my first points is that not all items are available for you to wear in your outfit so you'll notice here so this is the sim i've created i've given her the new clothes the new ray hairstyle but this is what i originally did so these horns and a number of other horns and hats and uh costumes that looked more of the alien sort of style this new face paint as well these were all available in normal creator sim but as soon as i got here into batu to create my batu outfit they actually weren't available, not even with the cheats that unlock all of the hidden objects. So I'm not entirely sure why they don't allow you to play as an alien when you're doing these these missions, when you're doing this story. Um, the As I'm sure you would already know, the aliens in this pack are not true aliens. Um, as an occult, they are actually more like humans that are wearing costumes. Um, and if I could actually find one, I would show you one. There we go, here you are. So that's more of a human actually wearing a costume. Now, in saying that, they the only way that I found that they have actually recognized people wearing these costumes as aliens is through the menu where you try and recruit people to join. I'm playing as the First Order here, which is the bad guys for those that don't know. And for some reason, when I try and enlist those that are dressed up as aliens, they it's says that only humans are allowed to be in the first order. So that's the only thing that I've found so far that actually recognizes these um, these 
NPCs in this case as aliens and not as actual humans. Otherwise, I see they look like they are humans themselves. So other than that, we have obviously these new types of lots. So this outside is a debug item. You can see how the entire thing lights up. So it's sort of similar to a rabbit hole. But then once you actually go inside it, you can actually enter it. And it is decorated beautifully. It is very, very cool. And this sort of thing just isn't possible to do with normal build and buy. So I'm not mad with how they did this. I think it's actually really, really cool. So I think it's really cool how they did it. And even you'll notice here that the actual walls sort of move with where the camera is as well. So I'm actually really like how they did it because they wouldn't have been able to make this look as cool in normal build buy mode. So. This isn't a negative for me. I think they executed it really, really well. And I would be surprised if we see more of it in future. I am kind of bummed that they didn't release a tool for rounded walls with this pack. It would have been the perfect opportunity. Obviously, literally every single building here is round. So that's my one thing that I'm a bit bummed about. But that isn't the be all and end all for this game. So that doesn't particularly phase me. In terms of gameplay, the one biggest quip that I have about this game and the one thing that I was actually kind of excited about for this one is the fact that you cannot seduce any of the main NPC characters. So those characters would be Kylo Ren, who's floating around here somewhere. Here he is. Or Rey, um, or anyone else who has a symbol above their head like so. You can befriend them. All your other socials are still there. Friendly, funny, mischief, mean, etc. But romantic is not available. And I think a sim guru did actually mention in a tweet, say that these characters are very busy and don't have time for um, frivolities. But in saying that, I really would have liked to do that. I mean, yes, this does have to be on brand for, the, um, for Star Wars and whatnot, but this is still The Sims. So that's one thing that I really would have wanted to keep there. And I mean... I love Kylo Ren and I really wanted to make some little Kylo babies, but apparently, apparently that's not the case. So bummer. Again, that's not going to be a huge thing for a lot of players. That was just me personally getting a bit excited about, um, and about a character that I like from the movies themselves. Other than that, fighting randoms with the lightsabers was cool. As you saw in my start of, in the start of my video, but there are not a lot of people around that actually have lightsabers that you can battle with or duel with. If you, if they do, you'll come up here um, in your first menu. But most most NPCs and most other Sims that are wandering around won't have it. In fact, in this area, there's only one other guy that does, and he's not always around. So I mean, I guess that's sort of true to the movies as well. It's only those that are Jedi and... Oh, I think this is him. It's only those that are Jedi or those that... Or, or Sith Lords as well. So the baddie versions. They're the only ones that actually carry lightsabers. So I suppose that still rings true. But it's kind of a bummer when you actually want some action in the game. That sometimes you can't even if you want to. You can't even do it with um, Kylo Ren actually, interestingly. Sometimes it's in the friendlies but no it's not available so you can't battle with Kylo Ren if he gets mad at you he will open up his lightsaber and sort of threaten you with it but and as far as dueling or sparring challenging whatever you want to call it you don't really get to but again this is a sims game it's not a it's not a star wars game per se so they isn't the, that fighting and battles and things like that that you would expect in a normal Star Wars sequence. What does happen is for the most part, your missions are going to people and talking to people. So this guy here, uh, where are we asked to see missions? So this guy here is sort of the first order lieutenant. And as you can see, you get a whole bunch of different missions available to you that you can choose from. So for the most part, like I said, you have to either go here, do this, look in these crates or unlock whatever, try and hack into, you know, some little data ports or whatever else. So it is pretty interesting, but it's quite hard and that it takes quite a long time to advance. The one cool thing is when you get to patrol in 
the spacecraft or do a mission in one of the spacecraft so there's three there's this one here there's the millennium falcon and there's one more with the resistance base i'm not going to go into the names because a lot of people if you're not interested or if you're not sure you want to buy the pack you're probably not gonna know the names of the spaceships anyway and quite frankly i can't remember them apart from the millennium falcon so as you can see it's cool it takes off and it zooms out now you don't get to go with them again at first i was a bit bummed about it but again in reality this isn't a star wars game itself and this isn't about battling and fighting and things like that so it makes sense that you wouldn't physically go into you know deep space in a spacecraft as well what does come up are these um sort of pop-ups which gives you options and it's sort of a choose your own adventure kind of deal so this one here my sim's called amara so as amara departs from the first order district um, a stormtrooper in a jump seat asks amara what area they want them to patrol so you can choose from three different areas amara lands near a humble farm a couple of farmers are uh, tending crops they keep to themselves and ignore amara's presence amara approaches farmers asks if they could take a look around they seem reluctant but agree they don't want any trouble where does amara look farmhouse or tool shed well, let's look in the tool shed, I guess. Amara searches the tool shed, uncovers a hidden compartment with a few heavy weapons. Farms explains for protection from mild fauna, but we're suspicious. So it gives you a couple options. And one of these is actually to scan the shed with your droid, which is obviously an option to buy one, or sometimes you can get them through missions as well. Um, is It is well, wor sorry, it is worthwhile, not just for cutesies. They are actually helpful. And in this case, I can actually use it in a mission as well. Amara scans a shed using a droid and discovers a large case hiding in another secret compartment. Amara confiscates the case's evidence. She'll open it upon it returning to the First Order District. Farmers offer a bribe of credits to Amara if she leaves them alone. Um, so we can either take the bribe or arrest them. I'm going to take the bribe. Okay, Amara takes a bribe. Farmers could be telling the truth about the purpose of the weapons and that amount of credits was too tempting. Return to the First Order. Now... I have, like I said, I've done a bunch of these already and um, I've never had a bad outcome from doing those options. So every single time it's worked out fine for me. I don't know if there are any bad options and I just happen to be choosing all the good ones. But but there you go. Um, so I just got to report back and that mission's completed. So as you can see, the missions themselves, they're not hard. They are really, really straightforward. And just here in your career panel, it will give you what you have to do next. So it's really straightforward. You shouldn't get lost or stuck or anything like that. Um, in your Simology, it will give you your rep uh, reputation. So as you can see, I am part of the First Order. And naturally, as the First Order rankings go up, your resistance or um, the opposing um, group will start to go down. Now, I do know that you can do missions for the first or for one of these two and for the scoundrels the scoundrel one has no impact on the other two would you stop talking to him i know you love him and uh, but so i know that you can do the scoundrel one it makes no impact but i don't know if you can do um missions for the resistance and the first order sort of being a double agent of sorts i have tried but when i went to the resistance and enc encampment it just came up as uh, sort of no missions were available so i don't know if there genuinely weren't any missions available it doesn't really make sense that they weren't or they just don't trust me or you just can't do missions for both factions so i'm not 100 percent sure about that one to me, it doesn't seem like you can, and quite frankly, it would all negate one another anyway, so there probably wouldn't be much of a point regardless. Are you reporting back? No, you're chatting. Stop chatting. Just do your job. Useless. <sighs> there we go. There we go. So mission complete, and you get rewards, which is this new currency, reputation, and you get bonus op objects as well. So you get all sorts of random bits and pieces, and there's also options to buy a lot of these items as well. It wasn't hard to make the money to spend here. Um, so here, I've already got 5,800. Most things are maximum. A droid was about 1,000 all up, I think. Um, a lightsaber was about 750, so it wasn't that expensive and at no point did I have to you know do more missions to make more money I literally had enough so uh, unless you know you want a droid straight away when you first arrive but I can't say it was really difficult um, so just going to 
the last area that I haven't been to, the Resistance Encampment. Now this is a really beautiful world all up. I think they did a brilliant job. Even if you aren't, you know, that into Star Wars, I think you'll still get a lot out of it. Um, obviously you have to have some sort of liking of sci-fi and, and whatnot. You still have to have some sort of interest in it. But in general, I think it's actually really pretty. And look at this waterfall. I'm in love with it. Isn't it just stunning? Gorgeous, gorgeous world. Now there are three buildable lots. The one here is hidden under this giant rock. If you go down, that's what it is there. And as I said before, so you could actually, because they don't call you home, you could live in this world indefinitely. I don't see why not. You could always convert it with the um, enable free build or cheat on. You could always convert, say, an area into um, living quarters for yourself and just live here forever. I think the only thing that happened from my Sims home was I got notifications that my power has been shut off and the water has been shut off and the stupid, you know, nap things from eco um lifestyle kept popping up as well but other than that there's nothing really calling you home so i see no reason why you couldn't stay here forever if you wanted to the world itself um is not huge like they're, they're big enough but sort of so this is one area of your world and that's it so not tiny but by no means huge either so as a really really brief overview of the build by objects they are really cool, but it depends on your build style. At the end of the day, you, if you only are building, you know, cute suburban homes um, or, you know, modern things, this probably isn't for you because there's not, you know, too many options that will allow you to build with the items that are within this game. But if your build style is more grungy, um, industrial even that apocalyptic sort of style this has a million awesome awesome objects they obviously had to create everything to make this world look like um, you know to make it look uh, legitimate so there are so many items that are actually within this and within debug as well so really really interesting but definitely not for everyone there are I mean there's a bunch of things that even just the like I say, the industrial style that you could still use. Um, but yeah, like I say, cute family homes, not so much. Cass is a similar sort of story. I mean, the clothing, I probably... Oh, there we go. He got angry at me for some reason. Radio. Um, Cass is a similar story if uh, the clothing itself suits the world, um, but uh, not so much anything else. The hair is really cute. I do like the hair that they came with. Um, shoes, uh, you know, I think there's two pairs of women's shoes. So the clothing and cast options are not fantastic and I probably wouldn't use them for anything. I think the only thing that's really missing in terms of Star Wars and really making it authentic, which like I said, they have done a brilliant job. I'm not putting it down in any way. But the only thing that for me seems like it's lacking is that whenever I think of Star Wars and the worlds in Star Wars are those big alien animals, sort of like the pack horse type of animals that are just sort of wandering around and bellowing and and whatnot. And obviously these worlds don't have it. It would be much too difficult to write up codes for, you know, these animals for this one world, especially because we don't have horses and whatnot. If we had horses, I think it would be a little bit easier, but farm pack please but that's probably my only thing that makes it less genuine which is saying something because like I say I think it looks pretty damn cool so there we have it folks I hope this has been somewhat helpful for you I hope this sort of answers a few questions that you might have my final thoughts are it really depends on your style of gameplay it really depends on your build style as to whether or not this is actually going to be worthwhile for you I'm really enjoying it. I'm not going to lie. I think it's really cool. In saying that though, will I play it again once I finish the mission? Probably not. It is it is a good idea though if you feel like your game is getting a bit stagnant. If you're getting a bit bored of The Sims for whatever reason, then this sort of could spice it up for you and make, you know, just give you something a little bit different to do or a little something different to get away from your you know, day-to-day -day laundry type of deal. 
You can go fly a spacecraft if you want instead. So I hope this has been helpful for you. I hope you like this video. Let me know in the comments down below whether you think you're going to get it or not. Let me know if this has convinced you one way or another, um, if the pack is for you. And I hope to see you all here again next time. If you like the video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks a lot. Bye.